There have been 13 different winners in the last 13 Xfinity Series races here at Michigan. Could it be 14 straight, Dave Burns? The countdown is on. The playoffs just six races away. And someone wants to win their way into those playoffs that currently isn't there. It's NASCAR Series Xfinity Series Racing from Michigan. The Cabo Wabo 250. Pace car is off of the track. That puts the field back into the hands of Sheldon Creed, who won the pole yesterday. Now, what can he do with it? Creed, Herbst, see the green flag. We're racing in Michigan. Working to get up to speed. As we see it three wide for the lead now, a big push coming from the 19. Taylor Gray is going to take the lead here at Michigan, but only for a moment. Here comes Sheldon Creed in the 18 on the outside. Taylor Gray on his own running seventh was right down by the apron and around he went, bringing out the caution for the first time here at Michigan. Everything looks fine and then right there. Back of the car just comes around on him, Steve. We talked about the balance between downforce. You have 15 laps on tires. You're starting to lose some mechanical grip. That's way when that arrow, that crutch, that side force you're leaning on like a cane goes away. And Steve, with them staying out when that caution came out, you also would not expect And the 18 of Creed, the leader. Around he goes. Lock it down, lock it down, lock it down. Get her straight here. Get her. Turn three, watch him gain getting into turn three. Now the 18's up the racetrack a little bit, and now he's pulling the air off the back of the car. That's the second Joe Gibbs Toyota we have seen spin out with no contact. That tells us they qualified fast. There's your pole sitter. He has low downforce in that car. The minute the Riley Herbst put his front bumper at his rear bumper, around he went, all the downforce left the car. He fought back to the inside, now for the lead. Ryan Sieg in the 39 makes the move on the seven. Will there be a crossover move? Here comes back to the bottom. The seven of Allgaier, side by side down the backstretch. And look at these two, now a push by Chandler Smith. Sieg is gonna surge ahead. As the seven drops back, can he hold on to fourth? The nine of Brandon Jones to the inside. But Ryan Sieg has surged ahead. Sieg trying to win the stage, and he'll grab it. Second stage win for Ryan Sieg. Little bit of precipitation has come down, so they brought the field onto pit road. They'll red flag it, and we'll take a look at the track, see for safety. As they're back underway with stage two, Door to door is an inner turn one. Three wide for third. And now jockey for position, he gets caught. Austin Hill sideways on the back stretch into the grass. He'll slide back up into the field. Let's see if he can keep it down. He does. Caution comes out. So he's on the outside. And you see him coming back across the field right to that point, and then off the front bumper. I think that's the 88 of Quapel. I don't believe the 88 did anything wrong. He's holding his lane. You know, the 98 just going to pop out of line and kind of easily go by the 30. Oh, oh, contact made into the wall hard. Did not clear Sieg and got into the wall with the right front. The nine of Brandon Jones is sideways. Oh. And a little contact there as well. The one of Sam Mayer caught up in this. Herp's got a big run. Tries to get back in front of him and just completely misjudges it. Yeah, just simply not clear. Wants to come up, try to end, open that entry into turn three. He has so much momentum here, he thinks he's clear. He's trying to cover that outside, and the 39 had to lift. The 9 got into him. To your point, Jeff, I think that he's passing the 39 with such pace that he thinks he's going to easily go by him. And at the same time, the 9 kind of gets to the 39's bumper and surges the 39 forward, which changes 
the pace of overtaking. Good sign here is Riley Herbst, winner of the Indy race. Last time Xfinity Series was on the track. Climbs out and listening to what he said on the radio before he climbed out of the car. You're clear, you're clear, you're clear. Tight. Hold the brake. You're all right, buddy. Yeah, I hooked it right when I heard clear. Yeah, you're all right. So that right there, he was being called clear by his spotter. Middle of the track, John Hunter Nemechek in the 20. Looks like he's got a big enough gap in front. And John Hunter Nemechek will win stage two. Pretty impressive, too, the way the 20 was able to just kind of stay out there. Four or five car lengths clear. AJ Allmendinger in the 16 in front of him, and they go spinning behind them. The 10 involved in it. So Daniel Dye. There's the 10 of Daniel Dye sliding down the racetrack now. Lawless the 15, Allen. yep, Lawless Allen. You're leaking fluid, you can just stop. There's the 15, three wide on the bottom. Yeah, there you go. Lose chases it up, catches the 27 and the 10. Jeb kind of gets it going. No, he ends up spinning around in the grass. The 10, Daniel Dye doing nothing wrong. Three wide top. 15 just gets loose. Bad air situation. You see him chasing the back and then goes up the hill. Sees part for the 97. And the Dave, what about the seven? Oh, here goes that pass for the lead, Rick. Just as we say that, will Carson Quapple get it? Yes, it looks like he is going to, but these passes have been tough. We'll see if the 20... He is going to drop in behind the 88, so Quapple does take the lead. And this makes more sense. If the 20 is going to try to connect to the end of this race, second in line to a car that's inferior on fuel is the place to be. Seven. A bunch of traffic, to be quite honest. I mean, we don't think about traffic in a situation like this, but it's out. Out. Oh. in the wall, too. Car in the wall in turn two. Oh, wow. 91 hard Kyle Weatherman. And Kyle's trying to climb out of that car quickly. You see right here, the 91. Toward the bottom, and there it is. Mm. Oh. Gosh. Tad Boyd, the spotter, was right. That was that was a huge hit. It's for a car that had issues today. He's 22 laps behind back in 30 seconds. So when a company like Joe Gibbs Racing, you know, they do a great job of kind of promoting from within and grooming this talent. You see when the jet dryer goes, the gray gets lighter after it has been through there. So they are drying turns three and four right now, hoping to get the restart in overtime here in Michigan. Creed to the bottom of the racetrack. He still has a little bit of help with Nemechek. Down the back stretch, the field. Two by two for fifth and a big wreck. The 88 gets caught up in Carson Quapple. The caution comes out, that will end the race. Upside down and over, goes to 28. So Kyle Sieg back on his wheels. Why this caution came out. Yeah, three wide down the back straight away. Like somebody got in the right rear of Quaffle and that just piled everybody up. Sieg upside down into the wall. Here we go, so it seems like it's hard to tell, but 45 gets into the right rear of the 88, gets the car spinning. That's a scary wreck to see. And Olgar will win in Michigan. Career win number 25 for Justin Olgar, his first win here at Michigan. And he breaks the tie that he was in with Tommy Houston and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And moves him into 10th all time the NASCAR Xfinity Series win list. Through the hatch, he will come. Dave. And there he is, Michigan International Speedway. Your winner, Justin Allgaier. A lot of Allgaier fans have been coming out here for years, hoping he would win here at their home track. And he's going to do it today.
Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.